much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. You have read the statement, and so you'll know that the chapter has today decided not to go ahead with any legal action against the protesters that surround the cathedral. In that you've already read it, I don't think that I need to say any more, but to ask for any questions. I think our present decision actually reflects a process whereby we were faced by an unprecedented situation in which the chapter has tried to address the situation with all seriousness, integrity, and have now come to the decision that this is the right way to go. I think life is a matter of going forward in faith and sometimes we make mistakes. We then have the humility to say that and we set out on another path. And I don't think any member of chapter would be ashamed of saying that today. Thank you very much. Yes. Yesterday, the dean in his retirement said that his going was giving the chapter space to look again at the situation. And we have looked again at the situation. All along, our desire has been to dialogue with the people outside. While there was the possibility, the possibility of legal action on the table, the legal advice was that we could not dialogue with people in that process. That became a source of great frustration to us and we decided that so that we can have sensible dialogue about the message, not the tents and the camp, but the message they brought, which we believe we've been proclaiming for some long time, unless we lifted the possible threat of eviction, then we couldn't have that dialogue. Earlier today, the Dean and chapter members met with leaders of the protesters, and I believe we had a very useful beginning to what must be an ongoing dialogue. Thank you for mentioning the report. There is a very important and prophetic report about this very subject, on which the Cathedral Institute had worked. It was about to be published at the time that this situation arose. And Chapter in no way hid the report. We genuinely believe that had the report been published in the heat of that moment, the important prophetic message of that report would have been lost. The report will be issued in the near future. It is really a survey of finances working in the city, expressing their views not only about their own life and their own prey, but other people's. And the beginning of it has a long and theological reflection by Canon Giles Fraser. And at the end, there's a further reflection by the former Bishop of Worcester. I, don't, I hope it hasn't, because actually, as human beings, we've been dealing with an unprecedented and very difficult situation. For a cathedral chapter, we've been in uncharted waters. I believe we've done it with diligence, with sensitivity, awareness of all the people involved, and we've come to this decision today. I hope that isn't a prospect. I have no promises from our meeting earlier today. Today wasn't the day for getting down to nitty-gritty agreements. We were talking to them about future dialogue. In the process of that, I shared with them the fact that I think working with us, we can actually get their message over in a much more powerful way. But you would hope what will come out of this then is that they will move. I went on to say 
that we are, our responsibility is to people who want to worship in this church. Between now and the end of the year, we should have nearly 100,000 people coming here to worship. We need access. And I must say, the leaders who met with us listened carefully and I think we're responding in a positive way that they would help us to main, maintain access so that the, the cathedral can work. As to how long it lasts and the development, I can't say after one meeting, but I came away from that meeting believing that we can do business with these people. The chapter, even when the legal option was on the table for us, it hadn't been taken, it was on the table as a possibility. We had said all along that we did not want and could not condone this ending in violence. But then that means they can stay as long as they like? No, it doesn't, because you're underestimating uh, human sensibility. The people I t talked to this morning, I thought, were, responded to me very positively. I've left that meeting with faith in human nature. Now, I could let them down, they could let me down. But I came away thinking we can do business here. I cannot predict the future. But I believe we have broken through a very important barrier today, uh, not only for the people outside and ourselves, but for the relationship of the Christian church with the world it's called to serve. Certainly the area of land within the bollards below the west front of the cathedral is ours. There are then slight grey areas of what is ours and what is the corporation's. I don't know the answer to your first question as to whether or not the corporation are going ahead. Would you want them to suspend their legal action like you have done? Or did you say to them? They have different responsibilities to ours. I can understand the, the corporation's concern uh, about access to highways and byways, and that's their responsibility, and therefore they're following their responsibilities along that path. Ours are different. We hope that by establishing regular meetings between our leadership and their leadership, we will develop a confidence in one another and a strategy, an overall strategy. In relation to other issues, say access, we may have subgroups dealing, but we have got to have different areas of engagement with them. And the very fact, one of, one of my frustrations is that uh, I've walked to church to worship every day, obviously who I am. In the evenings, I've wandered around without my collar, just listening to people. And I want, have wanted be, to be able to go in there as a canon of this cathedral to engage with them. But the advice was that could be dangerous while there was a legal possibility on the table. And so I think it frees us up actually to get in, into the community outside and to relate far more directly with them. And from the leaders this morning, they said they believed that would not only give us more credibility, but also more uh, engagement, more chance to share our concerns with them. Are you standing on the side of the protesters? I believe that they have the right to protest. By nature, I'm not a protesting person, so, and I'll be honest about that. I wouldn't go, go into a, a camp. But their concerns about justice and equality uh, for all people is something that's at the heart of the gospel to which I'm committed. I'm hoping that we won't be lined up against the Corporation of London. We've got a long uh, and very good relationship with them. Does this not bring you into conflict with the City of London? 
if there is conflict, and if we're in there, I hope the church would be a brokering agent within that, that we, we, would, be, we would be somebody talking to both sides, if it reaches that point. Throughout this process, we have been discussing with all our advisors, legal, PR, health and safety, a very important issue, and we discuss the situation with our advisors, but our advisors then leave us and chapter makes decisions. This is not a PR stunt, if that's what you're thinking. It is a breakthrough, I think, on Christian dialogue. I am not saying that I'm behind all the causes outside, because I think anybody going round will soon realise there is a whole host of causes, and I may sign up to some, but not others. But if we say the basic unifying cause, if this is so, is social justice, then I would say that there, we were there before them, actually. But we haven't jumped sides. I don't think we've been wanting to be on sides. Yes. Um, the appointment of Ken Costa by the Bishop of London is a very uh, exciting development. Could you tell me what you think about that and how you hope it might um, transform your relationship with the protesters and possibly the city? I was very heartened when the bishop mentioned Ken Costa because when I was Bishop of Kensington, he was in one of my parishes, so I know him of old. He is obviously a city man, uh, a man who's made money, but he is a very devout Christian and a man with a very large social conscience. And I think through his contacts and the contacts we have here, he will enable us to have serious debate. And that's important, that we move on from protest to serious debate that other people will really listen to, not only through the media, not only passing by, but we can have serious debate which can go out through our institute, and again, we've been doing that for years. And this is actually, in, in many ways, we've reached a point where we've come back home and we're saying this is something we committed ourselves to years ago. Within any Christian congregation, there's always a whole variety of opinions. And the Christian church, when it's working well, holds together. The, my most, I'm digressing, but my, my favorite uh, title for bishop is Pontifex, the bridge builder. And I've always sought to be that in my ministry. And I think that's what the cathedral is trying to do at the moment, to be a bridge builder. Have there been people in the congregation, though, contacting you and saying, please carry on with legal action, or you, know, you can't let these protests No, I, I, I must say I haven't had that, no. I don't, th I, if I can say, I don't think we've ever become their target. I, I must say, I think it's been a wonderful media operation to put the protesters against the cathedral. They said this morning, we didn't come here against the cathedral at all. We happen to be dumped on your land. And so I, I think that's been a media misrepresentation, if I may say that, that it's them against us. It hasn't been that. What about a victim? Do you feel you're a victim, if not a target? I think we... Uh, yes, we're a victim of being where we are at the moment we were there. And anybody who's a victim has to sort out how they're going to stop being a victim. And I believe Chapter's done that today. I think again here, this can be too simplistic. The trustees I know from the city and many of the city people I know are actually people who are giving hundreds of thousands to charities and good causes. And you mustn't make a division between trustees who've got money and power in the city and a social conscience. 
because the two often go very closely together. That, that honestly has not entered into, and this is true, has entered into our discussions. Our discussion has been, what is it right to do in this situation? And the situation has changed almost daily over a fortnight. That has been part of the difficulty for us. But I believe, I firmly believe, that if we're doing what we should do, then God will provide. That may sound pious, but that is central to my belief.